Thank you. All right. Very good. So uh, uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us here this morning. There should be a sign in sheet floating around here somewhere. Uh, just ask that you take a uh, uh, minute to uh, sign in here so I can get credit for being here today. Um, I, uh, uh, I have a lesson that I put together. I've been looking forward to this lesson for a while. And truth be told, you have, um, if you've been with me for a while, you've seen these different elements before. And uh, being we have next steps going on, I thought it would be good to sort of revisit some of these elements and try to blend them together in, in a way that maybe you haven't, uh, you didn't consider. Um, for those of you that are new, I always record my class and I put it on YouTube. So if you like it and you wanna go back and watch an old one, you can go back and watch an old one. I have the last, I think I go back, I think I go back about a year on YouTube and then I also put stuff on the church Facebook page so you can find, and that goes back about seven years. So, uh, you know, we, we've talked about all sorts of different things uh, in this class, so uh, that's where we are. But I start every class the same way. I start by reviewing our core values, and I'd like to start out first with the core value that Jesus demonstrated for us time and time again, and it's that Jesus always valued people, right? And at Cochranton Community Church, we have eight core values. Those core values are Bible. Bible. What else? Prayer. Prayer. Community. Community. Worship. Worship. Outreach. Outreach. Relevancy. Relevancy. Stewardship, and the last one starts with an S as well. Service. And I, I like to teach that whenever you get any group together, a gr any group that forms has some values in common. So this group, when we gather here today, there's two extra values that this group has, and those values are timeliness, timeliness and I'm going to need a lot of help on this one today. And the last one is growth growth we're we are here because we want to grow we want to get a little bit better we want to we want to get to know god better we want to we we we, we, we want to just get just a little bit better today um and so uh, uh with my uh, adventures last night i actually left my phone in my mother's car when i came home last night so I have, this, I have this smart watch, and I guess I can barely read it. it. The battery's not real strong, so it's not real bright. So Scott, can I put you on timer duty um, at 1035? Give me, set the alarm, don't worry about interrupting me, um, because I can't go that long, and I may, because I'm, I'm, I'm a little challenged here today. So uh, these are the core values that we have at Cochrane Community Church. These are the core values that we have in this class. And we always like to uh, uh, start off with what was, the, what was it that Jesus valued most? And it's that Jesus valued people. Now, um, just to give you all just a preview of what's coming next, we, uh, we are in a little four-week mini unit where any one of the lessons is intended to stand on its own. But if you go through all four of them, uh, hopefully you see how they all knit together. And it's on this concept of directional leadership. And I, I uh, gave that uh, uh, framework to you last week. There's you, there's people who have authority over you that you must lead up to. There's people that you do not have authority over and they don't have authority over you that you lead across to. And there's people who you have authority over who you lead down. Two. And these, th I mean, this is a highly sophisticated labeling system. Um, and uh, what we're looking at is um, starting today, we're looking at some principles that really govern how we lead ourselves. Leading yourself is one of the most difficult things, if not the most difficult things that any of us have to do. Anybody agree with that? Anybody lose the fight with the ice cream thing last night? I would have if I wouldn't have been sitting in the ER, I'll tell you that. Uh, tra so tra Trace, Trace was given the, uh, gi given the heads up because she really likes uh, some pe peppermint. It's, it's a pink mint 
ice cream. I, whenever she says she likes the mint ice cream, I come home with the green mint, and that's wrong. It could not, I, could, I have never been more wrong in my life than bringing home green ice cream and trying to play it off as pink ice cream. Uh, but, but, but that's where we are. Um, but uh, today we're going to be looking at how, how you lead you. Uh, next week we're going to be looking at how you lead others, which we're going to be looking specifically over here. Uh, and then the third week, how you, uh, how you lead your team, so people who you may have authority over. Uh, so just want to give you that. This is intended to be a very practical lesson that can apply to you anywhere in your life. In, in your personal life, at home, uh, at work, here at church, like that's, that, 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 that's my intent with what we're doing here today. Um, so that's going to get us through uh, what we're looking at that's coinciding with next steps. And then once the next steps group uh, is able to rejoin us, um, we are going to be looking at uh, some lessons on environment, imagination, and I'm going to come back and I'm going to revisit a lesson from last fall, which was on the myth of risk. Um, which actually is one of my favorite lessons, and I didn't have a man like Owen running the show for me, and uh, I did this wonderful lesson, and I didn't have any sound to it, so uh, we got to get it again. We got to get it again. So um, <clears throat> anyway, um, what we're going to do today, uh, and I think I may have mentioned this, is we are going to uh, just build on some things that I started teaching about a year ago. So if you want to go back and look at some lessons from January of 2023, you can go back and find a lot of these different pieces in a much longer form. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time on each of these individual pieces to, uh, today. Um, so um, I, I, I would suggest this. As I try to put these things together, it's sort of like building with Legos. Right? You can have, a bo I can have a box of Legos and you can put them together one way, but if you put the Legos together in a different way, maybe you see something a little bit different. That's, the, that's, that's my intent uh, for, for you today. Um, so we have our little um, directional leadership uh, grid here. And as we talked last week, we want to have about 50% of our effort in leading, in leading ourselves to allow 25% in leading up. 15% in leading across, and 10% in leading down. That's, that's what we're looking at doing here today. Um, so, um, so let's get started. Let's get started. I'm going to flip this over and probably lose an eraser. But I have four principles I'm going to share with you today. And again, each one of these you can go back and you can see in longer form uh, if you want to go back uh, to some old lessons. But the first lesson that I want to revisit is a principle that we looked at that was called the law of the lid. Does anybody remember going through this lesson? Oh, none. Okay. All right. That's good. I lost my marker lid. So... Um, the law of the lid uh, is an important leadership concept uh, when, when, when and it, it, I would suggest it's probably the foundational leadership uh, concept. Oh, my, I'll get it. That's fine. Thanks, Tim. Um, uh, it's, it's, a it's a foundation leadership principle because it says that uh, leadership ability determines a level, uh, a person's level of effectiveness. Or in other words, the leader is the limit. The leader is the limit of any group, of any organization, of any team, of any department, right? You, 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 you name it. Uh, uh, the leader is the limit of any church, of any ministry, um, of any government, right? Fill in the blank. Whatever group you have, the leader is the limit of that. And I, I, I like to think of it just sort of in, in a, I guess this is a vertical way, right? You know, we all, we, each one of us has a lid. Like, like today, my lid's probably about right here. Right? And if we work on it, my lid can become up here. Right? That's what we want to do. Because if, if I'm able to raise my lid, everybody downstream, you're able to impact. Right? That's, that's a key, key principle. And um, uh, we all have lids, and we can all raise our own lids. But as leaders, it's also our job to raise the lids of others. That's what I'm trying to do here today. Uh, you, you came in here, and you each had your, whatever your lids were. And at the end, I, I hope your lids are a little bit higher. I hope they're a little bit higher. I think I hope you have a little more capacity uh, for the people that you come in contact with. Um, I don't have all my verses written down here, but one that we have been looking at has been Luke 2.52, right? And Luke 2.52 said that Jesus grew 
Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. Jesus did not stand still, right? He, had, he improved himself uh, as, as, as he grew up. And that's our model, right? We need to be doing the same thing. Uh, Jesus grew, he increased, he raised his lid. And then what did he do with his disciples? He took, he took this ragtag bunch of guys and he raised their lids. Right? That's, that's what we see happen. Uh, you know, and and you know, we need to recognize that this is something that we should be doing to the people around us. We should be raising the lids of the people around us. Uh, I'm going to tell you there's some, some stories, and I'm not going to pull the, out the scripture, but if you want to go look, go to 1 Samuel. There's a, if you look for it, you can find this wonderful story, right? Um, it's uh, in, in, in the book of Samuel, you'll find that the Israelites have got to the point where they are, um, uh, they want an earthly king. They didn't like this whole judge system, and they, they looked around, they saw all these other nations with an earthly king. You know, God was their king, but they, were, they weren't satisfied with that, and they demanded, they demanded a king. And God said, well, if that's what you want, that's what I'll give you. Right? And the first king they got was a guy by the name of Saul. And so Saul, and, and under, this, under this idea, right, the idea is that Saul has his lid. And the fact of the matter was, is his lid was not very high. And God gave him instructions, and Saul didn't follow those instructions, and God said, that's it, you're out. And so he gives uh, Samuel, the judge, he gives him the, uh, the task of going and finding a new king. And he goes and he finds this new king, and it's this young boy. His name was David, right? And, and, and David has a lid as well, right? Uh, you, you know, we, we, we all do. So, so Saul has a lid, David has a lid. We well, flip through, and it's what, uh, what is 1 Samuel maybe 17, I think, is the story of David and Goliath, right? And David's still a boy. <clears throat> Saul was scared to death. David's like, we can take this guy, Right? We, you know, so we have David, he, he's exercising a different, uh, a, a different lid, and he, we know the rest of the story he goes out, he kills Goliath, he goes on, he becomes king later, you know, the nation has a lot of prosperity under, under, uh, under David, and we just see that his lid rises. Two people in the same, in the same office, but one, one rises and one falls. That's, uh, you know, just something that we have. So the, the law of the lid is a foundational principle. And once you understand it, you can see it everywhere around you. It was, uh, uh, you, you know, um, and, and, and that's, that, that's the good news, um, is that each one of us, we, we, not only do we have a lid, but the good news is that we can, we can, we can raise our lid. But it doesn't happen automatically. We don't get better automatically, because I'll tell you, whenever I, whenever I was first introduced to this, um, it was about 10 years ago, um, I could, and I've probably shared this with you before, I could take you to the, to the square sidewalk where I, where I learned that you can improve your leadership. And as I started to learn more about this, I started to see the leadership failures all around me. All you have to do is, and I don't care what your political persuasions are, um, but I would tell you this, if you turn the TV on and you see people in the news and in politics, you see a lot, in my opinion, you see a lot of low lids, right? You see a lot of challenges. But then what I, as, as I looked, I saw, I saw there were a lot of challenges at work. There were tons of challenges at work. Um, I, saw, I saw tons of challenges here in the church. Um, but where it really hit home for me is whenever I started to see the challenges that existed in my own household, and with myself, I realized that I had a low lid and I had to do something, you know, there, it was time to do things to, to, to raise and improve that. And so um, the next three principles are going to build in with this. So the law of the lid is our, is our foundational principle, right? Now the next one we're going to look at is, these next are gonna be like, how do we do things to raise our lid? And again, each one of these is a separate lesson. Um, the next one we're gonna look at is something called the law of process. And the law of process says that we improve daily, not in a day. All right, if you want to get better at something, it's something that you have to work at every day. It's not something that you show up for occasionally. You don't, you, 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 you don't come to church once and have everything be hunky-dory the rest of your life, right? You, you, if you want to grow, if you want to be raising your lid, you've got to show up and you've got, you, you, you got to do that time after time after time. Um, 
this law tells us that you become a better leader when you show up every day. And this is something that a lot of people get mixed up on. They think if they just read a book, or if they attend a class, or if they're coming to church on Sunday, uh, that, they're going to, that they're going to naturally improve. Um, and they may get just uh, marginally better, but um, when you do these things repeatedly and regularly is when you start to see these things compound, right? They really start to build on each other. You know, there is a world of difference between an event and a process. And most people get these things confused. They get, they get the, the event as being the most important thing. And it does have value. Don't, don't hear what I'm not saying. There, there's a lot of value in the event, but it's also the process is where these things really come into play. Uh, 19 years ago, I was given the task to start training pharmacists to give immunizations, right? If you go back 20 years, you couldn't get a flu shot at a pharmacy. Now you can't go by a pharmacy without somebody trying to tackle you and give you, stab you with a needle, right? That's what, that, that's the world. That's, I was involved in that change, right? Um, and I was given this task that you need to train, you need to tr train a dozen pharmacists to uh, uh, give flu shots this fall. And so we go through this training over the summer and that was an event. Like I trained them in that event. And then a couple months later is when the flu shots showed up. And how well do you think they did? They didn't do that well, right? Because there, there's, a, there's a world of difference between an event and a, and, 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 and a process. Um, you know, a lot of those folks struggled greatly. Um, you, you know, and, and it's, it's, th this is really what it comes down to is, as, as a general rule, you don't retain a lot from an event. I remember Pastor Kent being up here many, many years ago. And, and, and just as an aside, I, I haven't shared this for a while, but I love, I love ballpark statistics. I love rules of thumb, right? You know, I like just little, little things that I can put in my pocket and say, okay, well, what, what can I do with that? But I remember Pastor Kent being up here and he says, you know, most people forget 95% of what they hear within 72 hours. And I love a statistic like that. So if you're here for an hour on a Sunday morning, three days later, you remember three minutes. And I just ask you, if, does, does that resonate with you? When you get to Tuesday or Wednesday this week, how much are you going to remember about Sunday morning service? Maybe three minutes, right? And if you go a little bit further, it's even less. That's why it's important that you have to get the time and the repetition into building these things up or else it doesn't stick, right? That's, that, 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 that's what it comes down to. Um, but when you begin to work at it and work at it and work at it, when you, com when you commit to a process and you improve and you're connecting more things, that's when you start to see that lid lifting, right? Um, you know, how, how much will you retain if you read your Bible once? You might remember a couple of these and thous and thys, right? Um, but, you, you know, you, you, you'll retain some of it, uh, but you likely will not retain all of it. Uh, I haven't done this survey, but, like, how good are you with... Uh, Memorizing scripture. Most people won't make eye contact with me whenever I say, hey, let's, me let's, write, let's memorize some scripture. They'd be like, hmm, I can think of a lot of other things I'd rather do than that. That sounds daunting, right? Um, that's just that's one of those things that, that, that's out there. How, how did you memorize scripture? Time and repetition. Time and, you committed to a process. That's, that, that, that's how that happens. Um, so when you commit to the process, you will see things grow and improve. Um, I'm going to ask if you want, uh, I'm going to read this, Mark chapter 4. Uh, we're going to look at verses 26 through 33. Mark 4, 26 through 33, this is Jesus' teaching. Uh, it says, Jesus also said, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground, night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself the soil produces grain, first the stalk, then the head, and then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. Verse 30, and again he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable, or what parable uh, shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. Verse 33, and this is what I may have you underline, right? 
uh, with many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. As much as they could understand. Because when you first start out, you don't understand a whole lot. And if you've never done this, you, you need to look up what a mustard, does anybody know what a mustard plant looks like? If not, you should take a look at that. It's quite magnificent, right? I, I remember years ago, I had a slide uh, for that. I don't, obviously, I don't have slides with me today. But um, the law of process is, in, is at work all around us. And that's what, the, that's what the farmer does. He goes out and he goes through this process. He sows a seed. He sows a seed. He waters. The things grow. Right? And with time and repetition, by, by adhering to that process, you can take the tiny seed of the mustard plant and it becomes this giant. I mean, it's, it may, see if it's called a mustard tree. It might even be called a mustard tree. Um, but it, it, it can get to be pretty significant. Um, you know, I, I would say this have, have you ever read a Bible story? And, uh, you know, you'd be like, I've heard this story before, but this time when you read it, it's like completely different. Have you ever had that happen? I know it's happened to me. It actually happened to me with the story of David and Goliath. I was like, this isn't what I remember. This is a little more intense, right? Well, what is that? That's because I had committed to a process and I had grown. And so now things stick out to you. There's new things that stick out to you that hadn't stuck out to you before. Uh, my mentor once told me that, uh, or he once challenged me with, the, is the best you can do all you can do? And uh, the answer to that is, of course, no. The best you can do is not all you can do. Um, you can do your best, you can rest a little, and then you can do your best again. And you can do it again and again and again. And the way he illustrated this was with push-ups. He said, you know, how many push-ups do you think you can do? And if you were to ask me that today, I would say I'd probably max out at about three. I might be able to do three push-ups today. I'm not that strong, right? But if I did three now and I waited an hour and I did three in, in an hour and I waited an hour and I did three again the best I can do each time I do it you know at some point I might be able to do four at some point I might be able to do four I might be able to do five right so we we recognize that by committing to a process we see these things improve you know and just like the mustard seed the amount you can grow is seemingly unlimited when you compare it to where you started when you compare it to where you started it can be seemingly unlimited so when we obey the law of process, um, we at the same time feed the law of the lid. We, when, we, when, we hit that, when we hit the law of process, we keep doing that, our lid starts to rise. It starts to get, to get higher and higher. And this brings us to our third law, uh, which is, did you find a mustard tree? Okay, all right, very good. Thank you. The third law I want you to keep in mind today is the law of sacrifice. Sacrifice, I think I spelled that right. And the law of sacrifice says you must give up to go up. You must give up to go up. Right. Um, you know, and I, I shared a variation of this uh, uh, law a couple of weeks ago. I said you must you must give up something of value in exchange for something of greater value. And when you're leading yourself, um, you will find that as you grow, you will identify new and better places to lead yourself to. Um, and you'll find new and better places where you can lead others to. And in fact, as you grow and improve, you will have a greater duty to focus on better things. You'll always be looking for better places to be leading yourself and your, and your people to. Um, and the thing is, is as you focus on these better things, that means you're going to have to give up other things. You're, you're not going to be able to just keep adding to it. You're going to have to find some things that are going to go away. They're going to go away. And I'm going to tell you, many people have this completely backwards. They think that as they grow and improve, they're going to have more options. I'm going to tell you, it's, it, it's, as, as you grow and improve, uh, you're going to find that you have less options. That the, 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 these are the absolute next steps that you need to do because this is the most valuable thing for you to do. And so uh, I made up a story here about a musician, all right? Imagine a musician who says, you know what? I want to get started and I want to learn to play the piano. Does anybody know how to play the piano, just out of curiosity? Anybody know what a piano is? Let's, maybe let's start there. Make sure you're awake. Okay. Um, we know what a piano is, right? And so the thing is, is that as you start playing the piano, uh, your lid's pretty low. 
All right, you start off with chopsticks or whatever, right? You, that's, that's where you are. But if you obey the law of process and you keep doing this day after day after day, what you're going to find is that your lid starts to rise, right? And, and you're going to be able to play more, uh, more complex pieces of music, right? That, that, that wouldn't surprise anyone. But along the way, you may also have the opportunity to learn to play the drums or the trombone or the accordion, right? Everybody's looking to play the accordion. That, you see, that's, that, you can tell it's my story. I'm using wonderful instruments like that. And you know, I'm going to suggest to you that each of those instruments has some level of value. You know, the accordion may be less than others, but you know, the, the law of sacrifice tells us we must give up things of lesser value in exchange of things of greater value. And by giving up the options to learn how to play the drums or how to play the trombone or how to play the accordion, and by focusing on that piano, what can happen is that lid can continue to rise. If you start doing these other things, your lid's not going to rise. It's going to stay where it's at or maybe even decrease a little bit. Um, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna ask you to, that you turn with me to the Gospel of John chapter 12. And just in my challenge to prepare for this. Normally what I do is I, uh, I put the, uh, the text in, in my notes so I don't have to be looking too hard for it. Uh, how about I put the actual right gospel here? Let's go to John 12. What are we looking at? 24 through 43 or 24 through 33. That's where we're going to look. So let's pick it up here. Um, Jesus speaking, Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, my servants also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Now, my soul is troubled, and what, I, and, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that was, that was there and heard, it, um, and, and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to them. Jesus said, This voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from this earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death that he was going to die. And in this illustration, Jesus compares his death to, to a grain of wheat. Right in the, in the early part of this, in verse 24. Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. So Jesus compares his own death to a grain of wheat falling to earth, dying, and bearing much fruit. And when he turned around and applied the same principle to those who followed him, right? what did his, what did his disciples do? They, they, they did the same thing. And when they died... They had multiplied, and it's multiplied, and, that's in, and um, it just expanded from that throughout, throughout time and history. Um, and I thought it was really interesting that, you know, he's, he's talking about the things that, the, the, the struggle that he's in, and um, where was the actual verse? He said, verse 27, now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me for this hour. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. And I don't know where you find yourself today. I don't know what hour you find yourself in. Um, you may want to be saved from the hour that you find yourself in, but the hour that we're in may be the very reason why we're here, right? I just, I, I thought that was an interesting observation from this. And I want to give you some encouragement um, in, if, if, if that's where you find yourself today. And the encouragement is this. You were made to do hard things. You were made to do hard things. And I want to encourage you to say that out loud. And I want you to make it personal. Just say, say that. I was made to do hard things. Say it with me. I was made to do hard things. 
I don't know what hard looks like for you today, but I want you to know that you, 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 you have that with you, right? Jesus modeled the law of sacrifice, giving himself as a sacrifice, and then his disciples did the exact same thing. They were willing to pay huge prices to, say, to, to spread the good news of Jesus. Would they go to prison? Yep, they'd do that. Would they take beatings? Yep. Shipwrecks? Yep. You know, they, they, they took it all. They made all those sacrifices. They gave up something of value, but there was something of greater value. Now, I don't, I don't know, hope we don't have to go through beatings or prisons or whatever, but I don't know what it is that we have to go through. But we need to recognize that there are things that we give up of value uh, that are intended to be exchanged for things of greater value. And surely there were distractions in that day, right? Surely there were shiny objects, but the, dis, but the disciples obeyed the law of sacrifice, and because of what they did, we're all here today. We're all here today, right? So when we obey the law of process, when we obey the law of sacrifice, we continue to raise our lid. We continue to raise our lid. Um, we lead ourselves to become more influential and more impactful to everyone we come in contact with. And this brings us to our final law of the day, which is the law of the inner circle. The law of the inner circle. And the law of the inner circle states that a leader's potential is determined by those closest to them. Or in other words, who are your friends? Who are the folks that are, that, 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 that are hanging around, or that you're hanging around, or that are hanging around you? Because the fact of the matter is, is that none of us succeed on our own, right? We, we all know that we each have gifts, and we all know that we each have limitations, right? No one does everything well. That all said, not everybody recognizes this fact, nor do they recognize uh, the impact that those closest to us can have on us. The people closest to us can make or break us. It takes a group for the leader to find greatness, and it takes a leader to show the members of the group how great they are, right? And that's, that, that's where we are. Um, Proverbs eleven fourteen. Proverbs eleven fourteen 14 uh, says that victory is won through many advisors. Victory is won through many advisors. So we all need an inner circle. But just like mom said, we must choose our inner circle well. Ever have your mom tell you not to hang out with somebody? Or moms, have you ever told your kids not to hang out with somebody? Like, yeah, like that, because it, it, it has an impact, right? The people that you hang out with has a massive impact on where your lid is. Has a massive impact on that. So I want you to take a moment to think about your inner circle, those people closest to you, right? And I'm going to tell you, this can be a humbling exercise, or at least it was for me, because uh, as I started uh, studying leadership all those years ago, I observed that I didn't have much of an inner circle at all. I was doing a lot of things pretty much on my own. Uh, you know, I would say that Trace was probably, the, uh, you know, what was, was probably my full inner circle back in those days. Um, and she would bring things to me. And she would say, Jess, I think you'd be better if you, if you read this article. Jess, would you read this chapter in a book? And she would hand things to me, and the, you know what I would do with them? I'd set it down. She actually did this yesterday. She said, Jess, I got this book. I think you need to read the first seven chapters. And what I heard was seven chapters. Wow, like that's, that's a big ask, right? You know, that, there's, there, there, there's a lot of challenge there. And the thing is, is that I resisted her insight for a long time. I did. I did, um, but, um, you know, I got to the point, um, yeah, it, it, it just, it, it, it didn't work. But when we consider this law of inner circle, uh, and we, when we consider it in context of the other laws have, that, that we have learned, I share that story with you to be able to illustrate my, my lid was very, very low in those days, very low, right? Uh, but again, all these laws are connected, uh, whether you realize it or not, you have an inner circle. Whether you, it may be who you listen to on the radio. It may be who you watch on TV. Like these are people that have a, a great deal of influence and impact on you. And your circle may be small or it may be big. Right? It may be small or it may be big. It may be good or it may be bad. Right? 
Um, you know, to grow yourself, you're going to have to manage your inner circle. You're going to have to give close attention to who, who you allow to have impact and influence on you, right? Just like Mama said. Mama would say something like, you show me your friends, I'll show you your future. And there is so much truth to that. Your inner circle will have a direct impact on your lid. Now, when we apply the law of sacrifice to the law of the inner circle, we recognize that there are some people who are in our inner circle that we may have to give up and find somebody else to take a, to pick up, to take a larger role in that, in, in, in your inner circle. Um, and whenever you do that, whenever you make those exchanges, your lid goes up, your lid goes up, your lid goes up. So, you know, you, you always need to be looking for that. So these are the laws that govern leading yourself. And when we obey these laws, we increase the influence we have within the directional leadership framework. So let me come back here. When we, when we start, when we, we recognize that we have a lid, when we start into process, when we, when we sacrifice things appropriately, right, and when we build our inner circle, what's this going to do? It's going to make this box bigger. And as we get bigger, as our lid rises, what does that mean? That means we're going to have bigger impact on influencing up, bigger impact on in influencing across, and a bigger impact on how we lead down. This is why how, how you do you, how you lead you, is so, so, so important. And by practicing these laws, we can improve the effectiveness of our testimony. We can improve the witness that we, that, uh, to, to anyone that we encounter uh, and anyone that we engage with, right? Whenever we, whenever we encounter non-believers or people who are searching, um, you know, there's a lot of us that are scared of that because through this framework, you may say, you know what, I, I'd be really intimidated by that because my lid's pretty low. I don't know that I want to have a conversation about that. Um, I'm, I'm a little awkward in that, in that regard, right? And so what do we do? What are you going to do about it? I'm going to encourage you to raise your lid. I'm going to encourage you to lead yourself because as that happens, you're not going to be as concerned about those conversations. You're not going to be as concerned when those people cross your paths. You're going to, you're, you may actually get to the point where you start looking for people to have difficult conversations with because you know that by having those difficult conversations, it's going to get you to stretch and grow and do different things, and it's going to continue to raise your lids all the more. Right? That's, that, 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 that's what can happen. So um, I just want to uh, encourage you this morning or, or maybe challenge you this morning with, you know, of those, of those four principles that I shared this morning, are there any of those that you think that you're doing pretty well with, right? And, uh, you, you know, or is there some that you look at and you say, I'm not doing that one very well at all. I've never even given that a whole lot of thought. I want to encourage you to consider what, what sacrifices do you need to make? One of the sacrifices I had to make, I gave up TV. I recognized that, well, I, I largely gave up TV. Um, used to be I could watch TV for six hours a night, right? And it's much, much less than that now, maybe six hours a week. I, don't, I, don't, I mean, I don't, it's, it, it, it's nowhere near the, the hold that it had on me uh, a, a decade ago, right? Um, who's in your inner circle? Is there somebody in your inner circle, you know, is there somebody that, is, is there a gap that you have in your inner circle? Do you need to find somebody to help, uh, you know, fill in some gap so that you can raise your lid? And I want to encourage you just to think, think through those, think through those things. Uh, find, uh, uh, you know, don't, do not sit stagnant with this today. Take what, uh, take what we have here and look for opportunities to, uh, to raise your lid. Um, so again, there was a, a lot to unpack with these laws, and we didn't really go deep on any of them. Um, each one of these I have in a, in a longer form if you want to go back and uh, uh, review those laws when I taught them. Again, I, I started teaching these. The law of the lid and the law of process I probably taught in January of last year. The other ones were uh, sometime after that. Uh, but you can find those on YouTube or you can find them on the Church Family Facebook page. So I encourage you to go uh, check those out. Um, next week, we're going to look at how do we lead others. And I have four more principles for you next week uh, that we'll be looking at uh, that, we'll, that, that you'll be able to look at and say, okay, if I, if I follow these principles, it's going to help me lead up, it's going to help me lead across, and it's going to help me lead down. 
and all these things are going to continue to start to bend to, to blend together. With that, I typically end my lessons by putting the letters ACT on the board. And uh, you know, I will give you, based on what we have learned today, is this, what action will you take? What change will you make? And is there something that you learn that you can share with somebody else? Is there something that you can teach to somebody else for your sake and theirs? And that's what I have prepared for you this morning. Owen, would you cut the, cut the